So in the previous video, what we did was define our actions. We've got our constants and the creators. Now we need to actually have a reducer before any of these actions can be responded to by our store. So in this lesson, what we're going to do is jump into this reducers folder. I'm going to create the pizzas.reducer.ts. So inside of here, we need a few things. Now we'll first start off with our application state. So let's just jump down here a few seconds. What we'll do is export a const called initial state. And we can say that equals a new object. For now, what we're going to do is create a data property on that, which is just going to be an empty array. And we're also going to create loaded with a default of false and loading with a default value as well of false. Now in NGRX, we make massive use of type checking. So let's go and export an interface. What I'm going to call is the pizza state. So this is defining a slice of state that our reducer will manage in our entire state tree. Now, because we just added data, loaded and loading, we're going to say data. And what we can say that is going to be a pizza array. Now we don't have pizza imported yet. So let's go ahead and we can do import the pizza interface from go back a few directories into that models slash pizza model. So go ahead and import that. Now let's carry on with our interface. So we've obviously got loaded. That's going to be a Boolean. And we can go ahead and add that loading, which is also a Boolean. So when we save these out, we've got data loaded loading. We've got data loaded loading. Now at this point, we can actually add this pizza state to our initial state object. So this keeps things nice and conformed. We're controlling the properties that we add and making use of our static type checking. Now the next piece is what we need to actually hook up. We need a reducer. Now we've covered this in the previous chapter where we built our own custom Redux store. Everything we do in here is pretty much the same. We're just making it an NGRX style version. So let's go ahead. We can do export a function, call this the reducer. Now inside of there, what we're going to get given as the first argument is the state. Now, just like before, we also want to supply that as the first argument to our reducer function. We want to pass that initial state for our reducer. Now the second argument, we get the action. For now, what I'm gonna do is just leave this as any, and we can go and complete the function. We know that we need to return the state, and this will actually help us when our reducer binds our initial state object to the store, when it's first initialized. So let's continue on. What we want to do is specify that any of this state is going to have a return type and it's going to return us something that conforms with the pizza state, but we're just going to change those values. So if for instance, we changed loading to a string, we would automatically get informed of the error by TypeScript. So before we can go ahead and actually set up any switch cases, which we can then go ahead and modify our application state, we need to change this any across. So at the top, what I'm gonna do, we need to import essentially all of our actions at once. We could do import load pizzas, comma, load pizzas fail, comma. However, what I like to do is use the asterisk. So this will import everything as, and we can call that from pizzas. Now the actions themselves come from our newly created folder and we're gonna grab that pizza's action. Now, before we go any further, let's just recap what we have in here. We've got our action constants, we've got our action creators, and we mentioned briefly this pizza action type, which says it's gonna be either load pizzas, the fail, or the success. So we can take this pizza's action, and what we want to do is actually add this to here. So we can say from pizzas dot, and you can see that we have that pizza's action available. So this keeps our type checking nice and strict when it comes with dealing with the particular actions. So we're now ready to go ahead with our switch case. Let's start this up, we'll say switch. We want to switch on the action type and you can see automatically here that we have these potential types available to us. So if we actually click this and hover, you can see that we're expecting a type of load pizzas, load pizzas fail or the load pizza success. 
Now this gets even more powerful when we start creating our switch statements. Now we'll, we'll see this as we continue throughout the course when we can see that we can add properties and TypeScript will give us all the information we need. So inside the switch, let's create the first case. Because we want to reference our actions and our actions exist in the from pizzas that we just imported, we can say case from pizzas and we automatically get these given to us. So we'll start this off with the load pizzas and we can finish that off with a colon and then we can put some braces. So inside of here, we can then create some variables. We can then return a new representation of the state. So our first thing, what we're going to do, we're not actually going to use this directly just yet, but we're going to return a brand new object. Now what we want to return is merging all of the initial state in. So you can see that TypeScript has now picked up that we're merging all the initial state. So our return statement is now conforming to what we've told it to in our reducer. So in fact, when we dispatch an event called load pizzas, we're essentially telling the application that we are loading. So if we look at the default value, we have loading as false. So in this case, we just want to simply say loading is true. That's all we need to do. We have just successfully returned some new state at this point in time. What we're going to do, and you might find that you do a, quite a bit of this, we need to actually copy and paste some of our switch cases and simply just make some amendments. We're going to start off with the success case. Now the success case, we don't need to say that it's loading. So what we're actually going to do is toggle that back to false. And when the pizzas are loaded, we want to actually tell our store that the state has now changed to loaded. This allows us to control things like loading spinners. And when we come onto root guards further on in the course, we'll actually be using this loaded property to find out if we have loaded the pizzas. Otherwise, we're going to dispatch an action and make sure that those pizzas are loaded for us. So you can leave it completely like this for now. We obviously do not have any pizzas available. So we're just going to leave the state object like so. Underneath here, we're going to create another case. And you may have guessed it, we're going to change that to a fail. Now, despite what the store might be, we're going to change this to false. And we're going to say loaded is also false because on a fail, we have definitely not loaded anything. And this will eradicate any previous state. So at this point, we have successfully created our first reducer. We've got an empty array. We're going to populate this in the next couple of videos and actually render some data. And then we'll start doing things dynamically from the server. So we can close off the reducer for now. We don't need this. However, inside this reducers folder, we're going to create another index.ts. Now, this is the point where we want to actually have one particular file. And this is why the index is good for this, which actually contains all of the reducers for this particular products module. Now, because we have a products module, we're actually going to export a new interface, and we're going to say that this is the products state. So we're actually jumping up one level here. We've got a reducer that we've created, but now we need to actually make it part of the store. So at this point, we're actually defining the structure of our state tree. So in our products, we're actually going to have a slice of state called pizzas. Now the actual interface for this is going to correspond if we open up our reducer it's going to correspond to this pizza state here. So we need to actually go ahead and import this. So we can say we can import everything as from pizzas and we get that from the current directory and we can go and fetch that pizza reducer. So inside the pizza reducer file, we're actually exporting a property you can see here called the pizza state. So we've now composed a new interface that uses another interface further down our state tree. Now I've mentioned the word state tree a few times, we'll actually see this come alive. We need to set up a bit of boilerplate around it and then we can actually visualize what's happening here. So underneath here, what we need to do next is actually register our reducers. If you remember in the previous chapter where we looked at creating our own store, we did something like this. We did export const and reducers equals a brand new object. Now on our reducers, we know that a slice of state is managed by a reducer function. So the slice of state we're going to say is pizzas. We have a slice of state called pizzas and consequently that is managed by the from pizzas reducer. 
So we're essentially taking our reducer function, binding it to the pizzas. Now we can actually type check this. So NGRX gives us a small little utility which we can use. So we can say import something called the action reducer map. And we get this from at NGRX slash store. So we can take the action reducer map and we can add it as a type here. So we can say action reducer map. Now this accepts a generic type. So what we can say is products state is going to be the generic type. So for instance, let's say that we added uh, foo and we just made a function here. This would actually yell at us. TypeScript says it's not assignable to our type. So we know that we are definitely implementing the correct reducers based on the different levels of state. So let's go ahead and save that file out. We have everything from our pizza reducer. We're referencing an interface. We're then binding the interface to our action reducer map which is essentially describing what these reducers look like and how they are composed. So at this point, we want to actually dive across into our products module where we have everything relative to the module. We have the components, the containers, and the services. Now, what we want to do above the components is actually import the store module because our products module has no idea that NGRX store exists at this point or that we want to start creating our own data structures. So at the top, what we're going to do is import the store module and we get that from NGRX store. So it's up to us at this point to go and actually register this module. So we can take the value, we can go down to our ng module. Now we're going to add this underneath our router. So when I hit the dot, we can see a few things. We can see apply, bind. So these are plain JavaScript things. What we're interested in is this for feature. This allows us to essentially lazy load everything to do with our store and it will bind itself to the root store object. So we've just got one object. And when we lazy load a module, such as this products module here, it's completely lazy loaded. Once we use the for feature, this will essentially attach itself to our root store. So if we jump in here, we can actually show you that we're instantiating that for root here. So we don't have any reducers. We just have a plain JavaScript object. When our product module loads, we then bind it to that root object. So that's what's happening. That's the idea behind it. Now the for feature method accepts an argument. We need to say that it's going to be the products and we can then pass an empty object as the second argument. Now the empty object is actually going to be our reducers. So inside this store folder, what we need to do again is actually export everything inside of here. That's why we created this index.ts inside of here. So what we can say is export everything from and the current directory slash reducers. So this actually passes up what we just created. So we're inside our reducers folder. We have an index.ts and we can essentially access this reducers which is our object. Now again, we need to do this because this is boilerplate. We're setting up our store piece by piece. So at this point, we can actually import the whole folder from the store and we can actually bind that reducer. So let's jump back up the top and next to our store module, we'll add this underneath. We can say import the reducers and we want to get that from the current directory and that store folder. So if we click on this reducers, we then go through to that reducers object that we just created. So this is essentially passing it up one directory so we can access this. We can take this reducers value and jump down into our for feature. We obviously want to replace this object and we can just save that out and our reducers are now registered with our feature store module. Now we've covered quite a lot in this video. When we move on to the next one, we'll actually see all of this in action. And we can explain things like products a little bit further because we've got products and then we jump in here and then we've got pizzas. And then inside the pizzas, we also have another layer of state. So we're gonna understand all of this before we move forward.